Hello, everyone. Okay, so you saw the thumbnail. You read the title. You know what this is. This is this is something that doesn't exist. Not, I mean, it does now. Uh, this is, I'm calling it niche. I wasn't crazy about the word cronet because it sounds like some kind of futuristic Terminator, kind of like, oh, cronet, you know? <laughs> I don't know why I say things. Niche. Um, knitting and crochet at the same time using two crochet hooks. I did order a set of, or a pair of uh, five millimeter um, Tunisian hooks, because I don't own any Tunisian hooks. And Amazon has yet to take my payment. It's been over 24 hours, and I got two notifications that I got pushed back on my delivery clear up to the 19th of December, so I didn't want to wait to put this out. I'm just... I'm way too antsy in the pantsy for that. I made these two samples last night using <clears throat> a boy hook and a Susan Bates hook, so an inline and a tapered, and they are two different sizes. Slightly, this is a five, this is a 5.25. If you want to play around with this, you you need to use these, these straight sticks. They can't have any kind of ergonomic or anything on them. But if you've got any Tunisian hooks, you're, you're set, you're good. Uh, because I'm using short sticks, I am only going to do an eight stitch sample because when I played around with 10, I kept losing stitches off the back of my hook. Because with this, it's not like knit where you can bunch up all of your stitches at the top and work them that way. We're going to be working our stitches along the side of the hook. So, and I think, um, I think that these are going to be great for something like a scarf. It's a very interesting pattern. This is what I'm calling the knit stitch. And you can see, because this is so new for me, uh, my tension was kind of wonky in some areas, kind of not not consistent, and so I got a little bit of wonkiness in my stitches. Um, this, my tension, may have been off. I don't know, because this, this stitch here is a lot more forgiving whenever it comes to that. I'm calling this one the wheat stitch, because it kind of reminds me of a wheat stock with like the stacked wheat. I don't know. But this is interesting. Let me show you this way. You can see all the little lines that go up right here. And here it is from the side. Very interesting. I was just playing around and just, just came up with this one. And I'm going to keep playing with this and keep experimenting and see what else I can come up with. Uh, but for now, these are the two stitches we're going to learn today in this. We're going to go over this one as our base stitch. And then we're going to go over this one using this base stitch to create this one. Very, very easy actually. The hardest part is just getting used to holding two crochet hooks. As one is your actual working hook and this one here on this hand will just be a vessel for which you work the stitches. So let's get right into it. You're gonna start off with a slip knot. There we go. And I have repositioned my camera. I'm trying something new so that I quit working out of frames. So here we go. Make sure that I really stay in frame. I always feel awful whenever I work out of frame. All right, here we go. Let me zoom in just a little bit. Then I'll zoom back out. And there's a doggy hair. I have a dog. All right, so you have your slip knot on your hook, you're going to grab your other hook, tension up your yarn as you do, and we start working our stitches. I'm gonna start down here at the bottom because like I said, uh, we work our stitches along the side of the hook and on occasion you'll see me bang the hook down onto my couch and that is how I am simply going to move my stitches down. It's just easier because both of your hands are being used. So here we go, you're going to Come up with your hook resting on your working yarn like this. You're going to come over the top of your hook, yarn over, and pull through that loop. Then we come around the back, we yarn over and pull through that loop, and that is one stitch. Where you have a V-stitch is one stitch. Okay, I'm gonna do eight, and again, it don't matter which way this hook is, is facing. Don't worry about that. This is the one that you need to be facing you the right way, like we're crocheting. Here we go, we come around the front, 
yarn over, pull through. Then we come around the back, yarn over, and pull through. And that's two stitches. One, two. Come around the front, and then the back. That's three. Come around the front, and then the back. That's four. Front, back, five. Front, back, six. You really, if you want to make anything worth making, you really are going to need Tunisian hooks. Okay, here we go. Front and back. That's six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry. And the reason I say that is because you are limited to what you can fit on here. Really, really are limited to that. I guess just like with Tunisian and with knitting. Okay, last stitch coming around the front and then the back, and that is number eight. Then we move up just a little bit so that we can slide this loop over the top of our hook. And you can do that manually just like this if you don't wanna deal with the hook. Okay, then we turn. Make sure that your hook is facing you. I call it smiling at you. So make sure your hook is facing you. Now this hook will simply be nothing more than the vessel to which we put our stitches on. So tension your yarn. Here's our first stitch. You're going to, just like we did before, where this hook is resting on our working yarn, you're gonna come over the front, and I like to hold on to the loop. You're gonna come over the front and pull through these first two loops right here. Pull through them together. This is the filliest stitch of the whole thing. And it worked out. I tend to split that every time. Okay. Now we come around the back and we're going to yarn over and pull through this first loop. Plus we're going to split this V. So you're going to pull through just the first loop of the V, not the second loop. So you pull through that first loop of the V. Then we come around the front and we pull through these two loops right here that are not a V. See, this is your V and these are just two independent loops. So you're gonna pull through these two loops, then you're gonna come around the back and you're gonna pull through this first loop plus the first loop of the V. So we're gonna split the V. Oops, there we go. Then we come around the front and we work through these two loops here. Then we come around the back and we work through the first loop and we split the V, come around the front pull through those first two loops, come around the back, pull through one, and split that V, come around the front, and I'll be quiet now so you can just observe. little hair. That little hair is still there. Sorry guys, it's, it's a, you know, that's annoying. I apologize. All right, here's how we end. You're gonna split your last V, come around the front, pull through two, come around the back, pull through two. Then you come up to the top here, and you're going to pull this loop up over the top of your hook. Okay, that is what we have so far. And we just do it over again. Now we're going to bring this hook around, start kind of low, come down to the bottom, pull through the first two loops. Might help if I push my work up a little bit. Pull through those first two loops if I can. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> then we come through the back, 
and we pull through the first loop. Oh my goodness, is that another hair? Probably the same one. I'm shedding, you guys. Then we pull, we split that V. We come around the front, pull through the first two loops. Then we pull through the last, or that first loop, and then we split the V. And it might help to hold your work like this a little bit, you know? Just like this. Pull through that loop, plus we split the V. I still see a piece of that hair. Oh, that's driving me crazy. There we go. Pull through these two. Come around the back, pull through one, split the V. Come around the front, pull through two. Oh, I see you. <laughs> that hair is taunting me. There we go. And we're going to end just like we did the first time where we split our, or we work through those two loops right there. Let me do that again. We have these two loops. So we're going to end with pulling through these two loops, come around the back and pull through the last two loops. Then we just pop it over the top. There we go. I'll do one more row, then I'll work up a small swatch. Then we will get into what I'm calling the wheat stitch. Here we go. We just yarn over, pull through the first two loops. Pull through one, split the V. I'll work a little faster here. Okay, that's what we are creating. It's not perfect, but you know what? It's, it's a work in progress. And I'm going to keep practicing and playing with it, <clears throat> figuring out different types of stitches to make. I'm going to keep playing with it. So let me work up a little swatch, and then when I come back, we will start working on this stitch. Okay, so I have worked up a little swatch. I know I've got a white background now, seeing if that is good for the camera for you guys. So I've worked up a little bit of a swatch here. Now you can see how that looks. Let me back out just a little bit. So now you can see how that looks. Front and back is the same. I had some tension, you know, foul ups, but I honestly don't care because this is a learning process for me and for you guys. We'll figure this out, but isn't that neat? Okay, binding off. When I was playing around with it before, I found the best way to bind off without having it uh, cave in on itself on the top and be too tight is pull through one. Well, don't do that. Let me just get those back on there. <laughs> So you're going to pull this loop through this loop like that. Now you will yarn over and pull through just two. So we're going to split the V again, pull through two, yarn over, pull through only two, yarn over, pull through two, splitting that V. Yarn over, pull through two. 
yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, and there we go. And just do this all the way to the end. And at the end, we'll pull through three. Pull through two, pull through two. Now we just, we have three left. We'll pull through all three. And there you go. And I really like this a lot. I think it's fun and it's interesting. Okay, let's learn the other stitch. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this pink yarn. So at least now you can see the construction of the stitches. See there? Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so just like with the first stitch we played with, you're going to make your slip knot and apply your slip knot, and we're going to cast on exactly the same way, where you're just going to allow your hook to rest on top of your working yarn. Let me get retentioned here. Come over the top of your hook, yarn over and pull through, then come around the back of the hook, yarn over, pull through again, and that creates one stitch. I'm gonna do that for eight stitches. That's two, three, four. I look forward to getting those Tunisian hooks because these lumps right here do get in my way a little bit. Five. Six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then just like before, we come up to the top and we slip that over the top there. Come around and here we go. This one's going to start the same way where we pull through the first two loops and that'll be the same for every row. We will pull through the first two loops. Oops, there we go. Come around the back and we pull through the first loop, but instead of splitting the V, we're going to work under the whole V. So pull through the whole V, just like that. Come around the front, pull through one loop instead of two. Come around the back, pull through one loop, plus pull through that whole V. And that makes this stitch, honestly, a lot easier and faster. Pull through one, then we pull through, essentially we pull through three. Pull through one, come around the back, and pull through one loop, and the, the whole V, so three, three loops total. Come around the front, we pull through one, come around the back, and we pull through three. Pull through one, about to lose them stitches. Come around the back, pull through three, one. Finally, we pull through three, the last one. Come around the front, only pull through one, come around the back and pull through two. And then pop your loop over the top of your hook, turn and repeat. Retention. There we go. We're going to pull through the first two loops. There we go. Come around the back, we pull through one loop and pull through the V. The front, we pull through one. The back, we pull through three. One. Pull through three. Front, we pull through one. Back, we pull through three. So much faster this one is. Let me go a little slow here because I am supposed to be teaching, aren't I? So the front, we pull through one. Come around the back and we pull through one and the V, which is three. One, two, three. Come around the front, we pull through one. 
the back, we pull through three. One, come around the back, pull through three. Now we end it with pulling through one around the front and two around the back. We pop that over the top of our hook. There we go. Turn our work and repeat. Retention up, yarn over, pull through two. Come around the back, pull through one, two, and three. Come around the front, work through one, come around the back, work through three. Now I'm just going to do this without talking so that you can observe. There we go. Okay, I did a couple rows with you. You can see just how quick and easy this works up, especially with this, like, what I'm calling a wheat stitch. There we go. Get 
right over the top of that there. Nope. Doesn't want to go, does it? There we go. And I like this stitch a lot. I think it's neat looking. It's reversible. It's quite thick. Quite squishy. And I like it. And I'm going to, like I said before, I'm going to keep playing around with this and making, uh, I don't know, new little discoveries and figuring out different ways to play with this technique. Do I think this is going to take off the world over? No. Uh, maybe. Could. Could. I don't know. Uh, I'm not expecting it to. But it's something neat for those of us who cannot knit and desperately want to do something that's like knitting. It doesn't look a whole lot like knit, I guess. This looks more like crochet. I suppose this could look a little bit like knit. Um, I don't know. I don't know. You guys are the ones with the opinions. Leave them down below. Let me know what you think. I like it. I think it's fun. It's interesting. It's Maybe it's slightly gimmicky, uh, but then again, maybe not. I mean, this is going to make a really cute scarf. This is so thick and squishy. I think it's neat. And if nothing else, I would say learn how to make this stitch right here just for scarves. That's, I mean, just something neat to do. Just something different to do. It's something different from crochet and from knit. It's just something fun and different to do. So if you guys like the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'm likely going to keep playing with this technique and seeing what else I can come up with. And as soon as my Tunisian hooks come in, I will leave a community post of a scarf I definitely intend to make with it. A nice wide scarf. And I will see you guys in the next video. And if you're new to my channel, check out my library of videos I already have. Okay, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye.